Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. So glad you could join us for our Wednesday evening service. If you please turn to 410-410. Faith is the victory. unseen. Lord, we glorify you uh, for allowing us to, uh, to have those. Lord, I thank you for the victory that you've given us in today, Lord. Lord, I do pray that you please be with us tonight, Lord, that your hearts are just open and receptive to your word, Lord, that you continue to bless us with, uh, with your wisdom, and that you just please be with Pastor, give him utterance and boldness to preach. Be with those who are going to watch this video later on, Lord. Let it be a blessing and encouragement to them, Lord. Let it just stir their hearts and souls so that they may... Uh, be more willing and open to, to seek you. Lord, I just pray all things in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. I'm Pastor Serrano, and you are watching Valley Baptist Church. You can find us at El Paso, valleybaptistelpaso.com. You can find our services and uh, address and uh, I'd like to invite you to come visit us. We are in Psalm 1, Psalm, I got wrote the wrong song, mm -hmm. Psalm 34, Psalm 34. When you find it, would you please stand for the reading of God's word? Psalm number 34. The Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make good boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. All magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. 
I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped the about, excuse me, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. And then verse number 10 is our verse for tonight. The young lions do lag and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to meet in the middle of the week. We pray for these who are here. And then, Father, we pray for those that are working and those that are um, on duty. I pray, Father God, for those that should be in church who are not. We love them. I pray that you draw them back to thyself, Lord. And I pray for those new viewers, Lord, that will hear this message as they scroll through uh, the YouTube videos. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you speak to their hearts and you draw them to yourself, that they might be saved. And thank you, Lord God. Your people uh, need to hear from you, Lord. Mm. Holy Spirit of God, please speak to us, teach us. We ask it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We learn in verse number nine uh, that the Lord can be but good. Excuse me. Verse number eight. That the Lord can't be but good. We saw everything he created for humanity. And those who trust him are blessed. Also we saw his saints specially should respect, honor, and exalt the Lord. This is, this is called fearing the Lord. Which means to reference the Lord. Tonight we, should look, we are going to look at uh, how to seek the Lord. How to seek the Lord. Okay. And the verse begins with uh, illustration from nature. God gives us an illustration from nature. It says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. The young lions do lack. A pack of lions is called a tribe. They travel to hunt together and the females leave the cubs back in a safe place while they hunt. Once the adult lions make the kill, they all come together to eat. One of the mothers goes back and gets the cubs and leads them to the kill where the cubs also eat. This is the normal uh, way that things work out there in your uh, uh, National Geographic channel, right? Mm -hmm. But why do the young lions lack? It says here the young lions lack. And so let me give you three reasons why the young lions might lack. There are many situations where the young lions go without and do lack. Number one, sometimes the mother is not able to provide. If the mother and the cub are separated from the tribe and the mother is too old to provide for the cubs, the young lions do lack. Number two, if the cubs are separated from the tribe, for whatever reason, the young lions are unable to provide for themselves. They are not skilled hunters, therefore the young lions do lack. Number three, even when the cubs are brought to the kill by the mother, the lion, young lions uh, can lack. Once at the kill, the adult lions and females are all fighting for the meat. All the young lions can do is look on. There the young lions do lack. Have you noticed a trend here about the lions? Have you, have you picked up the trend about the lions already? Did you see something there? That the young lions really can't do anything for themselves. They're like little babies. And they are, in a sense, little babies. So there's a trend right there. The young lions are dependent on the adults for their meals. 
They depend on them to hunt and to provide meat. They depend on them to lead them to the water. They depend on them to keep them safe from other animals. Depend, depend, depend. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Those that don't depend on God do suffer hunger. Okay? Do suffer hunger. If you plan to work in your own strength, well, all you got is your own strength. But if you depend on God, then you have God's strength. Okay? Secondly, it says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall want, shall not want any good thing. When you seek the Lord, you will not lack any good thing. God gives us an illustration for nature. The young lions do lack just as the lions are dependent on the adults. The saints in the same manner should depend upon God for their needs. I know that God made us wise and he's given us uh, wisdom and education and sometimes that can get in the way and we think we can do everything by ourselves. But God promises that his children shall not be hungry. In Psalm 37, 25, it says, I have been young, and now I am old, yet have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Nor his seed begging bread. Isn't that interesting that all those guys out there with a sign, they're all Christians? Mm -hmm. Psalm 37, 28, For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. Okay? Now, what is a saint? We covered that in a couple messages ago. A saint is a Christian. A saint is a person who has placed his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and has trusted him for salvation and to be his savior. That is a saint in the Bible. And the Lord here, for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. Isn't that the same promise that we have also in Hebrews 13, 5? Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be content. Be content. Okay? A person that is content is going to be a happy person. Okay? But a person that is not content... They're always seeking for more. And you know what? God has determined exactly what each one of us is supposed to have. And if we, in our own strength, seek for more, we are going against what God already plans. And there's going to be hurts there that are necessary. It is best to trust God. Now, God will not forsake the saints, they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. You will not lack food. But not just food, your very provisions, your maintenance, your practical everyday needs, God promises he will provide. Even when Israel was in rebellious, a rebellious state, God still kept his promise. You know that? Even when they were at their worst time of rebellion, God still did not allow their shoes to wear out, their ankles to be swollen, did not uh, kept them hungry, brought them manna from heaven, water from the rock. God was still doing all these things all the time. They were complaining and wanting to return to Egypt. In Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 15, the Bible says, and gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. After all of that, he still brought them to the promised land. Even with chastisements and death, he still kept his promise and brought them to the promised land. What God does that? A few times, God just wanted to start all over again. God just wanted to just 
squash them and, and start over again. But if it wasn't for Moses who went on his face and said, no, Lord, these are your people. These are your people. And what is the world going to say? That, that you brought them and you couldn't pick them in? What are they going to say about you, God? What kind of God can't do something like that? God gives us an illustration from nature that in nature, the young lions do lag, but God's saints will never lack. Not just food, provisions, your maintenance, your very existence God provides. God made a way for his beloved creation to be delivered from the power of sin and to have the opportunity to have eternal life. What God does that? In Romans 8, 32, this, this verse just blows me away. It says, he, talking about God, he that spared not his own son, that's Jesus, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It almost sounds like, it almost sounds like God is almost like begging us. You know what? That's God's mercy. Aren't you glad he's like that? If you were God or I was God, it, it would have been all over already, right? But no, God is a merciful God. Jehovah, the only true God, the creator of the universe and everything in it, a kind and merciful God who is not only good, but extremely good to all. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your hearts. Don't forget to seek the Lord. Okay? Remember to seek him before you go to work. Seek him before you go to work. Okay? It'll go a lot smoother when you do. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Any good thing. That means anything that is good for us. Okay? Our God, our Creator, knows exactly what is most beneficial for our goods. If you have not received the million dollars you are asking for, it could be because in his omniscience, he knows that that request will actually do you more harm than good. Therefore, he hasn't given it to you. God will consistently provide your needs. What you actually need. His decisions is without prejudice, without favoritism, and according with his will. In 1 John 5, 14, the Bible says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Remember that when you pray. If we ask anything according to his will. Not, not according to our will, but his will. And remember that anything that is good that we need, he will not hold back. Because he knows that we need it. In this verse, God promises that as the young lions depend on the elders, we must depend on him. That when we seek him, we're not going to lack any good thing. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Remember that there's a difference between wants and needs, or needs and wants. Remember things that are good for you, things that are good for you. He will not withhold things that are good for you. They are there for the asking. They are there for the asking. James 1, 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally and operate it not. And it shall be given him. What are you asking for? What is it that you are asking for? You ask for your provisions, but what is it that you should be asking for? 
If there was one thing that we should all be asking for, we know that he's going to take care of us. But what, what, what is one thing that we should be asking for? Something that is selfless. Something selfless. Something not for us, but something for others. How about we ask for salvations? Let's ask for salvations. The salvation of our children, our husbands and wives, our extended families, our neighbors, our co-workers. Let's pray for that. Amen? Yeah. Remember, and the in the natural environment of the animals, they do lack. But we are better than birds. We are better than anything that God created. We are the creation. We are his best creation. And he set up everything in, in the world before he created Adam and Eve. Everything was all set up for them. He wants the best, what's best for us. And he knows because he's our creator. Amen? Amen. So what are you asking for? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the short message tonight. Thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that we need to depend upon you. Amen. Just as the uh, young cubs depend on their adults, whether it be females or males, for their means to survive. Lord, we can't survive in this world without you. We will be lost. We need you, Lord, to give us guidance and wisdom, to give us humility, to give us a zeal for you, Lord, and to be ready to give an answer to all those that ask us, Lord. Father God, I pray that you bless our time of prayer now in Jesus' precious holy name. Hey.